One thing we definitely need to make mention of before we jump into this once again amazing episode of the new Fruits Basket anime is we got a new opening and ending theme. The opening and ending theme both slap really really hard. They are ridiculously well done and while that's not shocking as if you look at all the openings and endings they're all really good, for that reason I always feel like I know what to expect with a new opening song especially when you're still in the same anime season it's not like we took a year break and we came back and they blew us away with a completely new style and things like that. You just kind of get comforted and being like, oh, I know what to expect. But they kick off this episode with this very slow beep. Just every single note that got hit, I was like, it felt like it was piercing my soul. And the visuals just, it felt like it was trying to tell a story alongside the actual anime episodes that we've been following. And then you end the episode with an equally memorable ending song. And I'm just like, Fruits Basket... What are you trying to pull here? Why are you going all out with these openings and ending themes? What the hell are you doing with the second half of this anime season? I don't know, but I'm definitely excited for the ride, I have to say. This episode really was quite spectacular, especially considering when you read the title of the episode. I was like, um, Toru, you gonna kill yourself? Yuki, you gonna kill yourself? Like, I didn't know where this whole die title was gonna come from. But I was pleasantly surprised by what Haru pulled in the episode and I kind of just wiped off the sweat being like thank god because I thought we were getting into a little too dark of territory a little too quickly. I wanted to have a little nice ease into that if we were going to go that dark and just twisted. But honestly the episode overall was pretty packed in terms of substance. The primary focus was of course we have Toru, we have Yuki, a little bit of Kyo, and then of course we have Haru and Rin. And the Haru and Rin content was really spectacular but since that was kind of like the dominating force. I actually want to touch upon some of the other content that was a little smaller in comparison, but honestly equally memorable. The whole Toru situation with their grandfather I really enjoyed. Anytime there's grandpa plot lines, especially with health issues, it always kind of hits that spot just due to my own personal life and things that have happened over the past year for me. So it really did, like I felt very emotionally connected when I just saw Toru just shaken by just learning that her grandpa was ill. It was just a sprain back. And you're thinking, okay, you know, we can deal with the sprain back. And then the end of the episode, closer to, you're thinking Grandpa's about to pass away. And I was not ready for that. I was really happy that he just passed out. But to see what they built up with that, it's one of my favorite directing that they've done for Toru in quite some time. Because it triggers something deep, deep down that she kind of locked away. Which was the phrase that he said, just wishing that he could see them again. Obviously mentioning Toru's mother and father, which is something her mother said and she felt very guilty as if, you know, she wasn't happy enough, she wasn't bubbly enough, and she couldn't save the person that she loved, and she thought the same thing was happening to really her last parent figure, which is clearly Grandpa, who kind of rose to the occasion to fill both roles in a family that definitely pushed her away and just kind of considered her a burden. So what was interesting to me is it didn't dwell on this too much. If this was season one, this would be a very big thing, where it could be an entire episode worth of content, and while obviously this hasn't been solved or anything like that, the fact that she just kind of crashed and Kyo going wherever he was going to go, saw her, helped her up, and then decided to change his direction, even when she notices like, hey, weren't you going somewhere else? He's like, come on, let's go home. It's very interesting to me, just based on all the development we've seen between Kyo, Yuki, and Toru, simple moments like these, which are very emotionally heavy, can have a much more peaceful and kind of like simple resolution, or at least a temporary band-aid, than what we could have saw in season one where really it would have been episodes of like oh we just believe she's okay and then you run back home on new year's and you're like oh god she's crying alone but here we just see like clearly something's bothering her give her a little joke give her some comfort walk her home because you know that's more important than wherever you were going before and i really like moments such as those but yuki's content was actually quite interesting to me i never expect yuki's past to pop up so every time they flash back and show us things like him alone in a dark room. I'm like, why? Why is this boy locked in this room? What are you doing, Akito? What are you doing? It always pisses me off, but that's how you know the storytelling and character writing is really phenomenal because it gets you worked up. That's why Akito is such a fantastic antagonist. In fact, one of my favorite antagonists I think I've ever seen in the anime medium. The whole like flashback with Haru, Rin, and him in that room and how basically Rin would drag Haru away and then you'd see someone come in to like monitor Yuki. It was quite interesting because I didn't know like what they were building up to that, but as the episode progresses and as things start getting said, you really do realize how much Rin cares for Haru, and obviously Rin cares for Haru. No one I doubt is going to be shocked that she did, but there was a lot of uncertainty about her actions based on the scar that we see on her back in this episode, based on just how she's trying to separate herself despite clearly 
enjoying the company of this man and clearly they have built quite a connection it seems to me that there's a lot we don't know about Rin in terms of just there's clearly something that is making her fearful as if she needs to tackle things alone handle the burden by herself I'm not sure if it directly just relates to Octo or if there's another external force but clearly she thinks separating herself from Haru is worth the pain because whatever is going to happen if she stays connected is going to be far more dangerous or even more painful. So to me that says a lot about how much further we have left to go because really I think we're only at the midway point of the story give or take. So another season and a half worth of content like we have a lot of things left to explore even if certain characters we think are like oh you know the Kagura storyline we think that's pretty good and then they slap us with more Kagura who is like just being like this is so unfair and selfish like after like you're even ignoring Toru after everything that happened it just feels like a giant web like it feels like you need a flow chart at times because all the little connections it's not just like it's like okay Toru Yuki Kyo that's her connection okay we have Kagura connects to Yuki and that's all it is no it's like every single character interlinks in some way obviously some more than others and their connections might be a lot more impactful like Obviously, Kagura and Toru are as impactful as, say, Kagura and Kyo, but they still have a connection. So it's really interesting to me how as you're watching episodes, obviously a lot of the stuff that's being connected in this episode is from, like, the past few episodes. But it feels like you say, oh, man, I was thinking about how they're acting in this episode or why when Yuki's brother said this and why it's flashing back to the same thing that Haru said about his weakness and how his kindness is like the same thing and something they admire. All these little things, even if you didn't get flashbacks to remind you of what was said or what happened, you naturally kind of remember certain things about it without needing a rewatch. But of course, if you rewatch it, you're going to pick up on all the more connections being like, oh, my God, that is so well developed. And at such an early stage, so when you came back to it a season later, it just feels so well connected. And that's why the whole Yuki storyline there was so great to me, because Yuki is a character who's not just snapping and figuring out what he wants to be in life. He very much believes he does not deserve happiness. He believes he hasn't given enough back to people, and that's why he struggles so hard and just chases after others, because he wants to help someone obviously like Haru because Haru's been there for him and he wants to be there for him now being like oh does Rin actually want to break up when really it's his and Rin's problem to solve it really really is at the end of the day and he has his own struggles to overcome as Haru states I actually really like how the friendships that are in this show they do feel genuine but they're not the type of friendships that are just like oh I have problems so I need you because I can't solve them without you at certain points I see in this episode it is said you know what I do have problems and maybe sometimes a helping hand would be really nice but honestly man you have your own problems too and I'm not gonna feel good about myself if you sacrifice your own when he's the entire reason that he got to live at Shigure's house which was just something in itself and that's what I really like about this entire formula is that it doesn't feel one note it doesn't feel linear it does twists and turns and it rounds back and you're like okay I thought we were already here why are we going back oh that's why you need to uncover more mysteries and truths about that event then you're going to a new one it's not something that flows start to finish it takes a lot of detours but those detours every single time show us a side character shows us a character we thought we understood in completely new light and then shows us the main thing that we've been focusing on in a completely new light and perspective and that's really impressive to me and honestly the Haru and Rin content was bittersweet is probably the best way to put it this man really does love her and it does seem like she loves him I mean that kiss was definitely romantic and based on some of the flashback imagery it was quite touching in my honest opinion but still pushing away and I'm really kind of glad they did that because based on everything we've seen with Rin as a character it wouldn't make sense to me even though I did have the suspicion that she still did want to be with Haru if it just magically fixed itself and I still don't think there's a guaranteed fix for that relationship and that's kind of the beauty of Fruits Basket is even when you get those like you know shoujo romance scenes you're like oh it's all working out it's not necessarily going to work out or it's going to take a lot longer because when you're in a family that's literally cursed and you have this head person being revered as a god basically because you can't disobey Akito because that is the leader of the Soma clan there should be a lot of struggles to get there I mean the fact that you couldn't even like literally visit Yuki without the fear like you'd have to run out there like I mean there's a lot that you have to take time with and I'm glad they are taking the time because it's very easy for an author to say Toru Yuki and Kyo that is what fans want to see the love triangle that's what most authors would write it as but rather here's a giant ass cast of characters Love Triangle doesn't even like really exist for the most part. It's kind of like Yuki's still unsure about himself, but it definitely feels like the romance that's blooming is between Toru and Kyo. 
Everyone else is having their own interpersonal conflicts. Like Yuki is pretty much now in the student council and maybe one of his potential love interests could be in the student council or it would be a different person. Maybe he'll have no love interest. Maybe it could be like you just don't know what's going to happen. And I love that about this show because that's how people should be written as if you don't know where their lives are going to go, but you just want to support them and help them along their journey so they can find their own happiness. And that's what makes it so interesting to me. This episode had a lot of substance. It was actually kind of flashy for not being flashy. I know that sounds weird to say, but take one of my favorite shots in this episode. When we have like Kyo being all isolated and being discussed, there's a scene of him in the classroom and they start the shot off on a very medium wide shot, just showing an empty classroom with him looking out a window. That is a phenomenal directing technique to just put into perspective how isolated and lonely he is as his internal clock is running out before he's going to be caged in for life. There's a lot of shots that honestly say it all. Maybe it's not blowing away with the crispness of character designs and the most Sakuga in terms of petals flowing around in the romantic scenes. There definitely was some impressive shots, but the directing told the story just as well as the character's dialogue that the actors are reading from their script. That's why this adaptation is so good, is that the production is actually phenomenal, just it's not going with traditional Sakuga in terms of like, oh, big gust of wind, petals are flowing, here's all the romantic imagery, like just take kind of like the opening in terms of how it's directed, that's what people think a show like Fruits Basket needs to look like 24-7 in this run for it to be beautiful, but honestly it is beautiful and the voice actors are doing a phenomenal job at capturing the emotional atmosphere. This was a great episode, it talks about weakness, it talks about really important themes about rising up and just having to tackle your problems, but still needing a helping hand when you do ask for it. So let me know your thoughts and opinions down below, favorite moment, and where you think it might go next week if you have no knowledge on the source material. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like to share your support. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you happy new round here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.